media company itself was running out of money. They built a chipset, they had convinced Atari to consider licensing the chipset to make the Minecraft games with. But they were basically started. You know, they turned in my contract it was hard to hire anybody. They weren't yet at the point where they could afford to re-pivot towards personal computers. But the Macintosh was introduced in 1984, and that said, hey, personal computers, it's got a 68,000 in it. Maybe we can make a colored Mac out of it. And then Commodore came along, needing new products and energy, and they bought Amiga. And they said, we're going to make a computer out of it, not a video game console. They were watching the carnage in the video game world, thinking, no, we're not going anywhere near that. They didn't see the opportunity that the NES would represent in 1985-86. So they did what they now call pivoting towards a personal computer, and we went in that direction. The Commodore Investment, they had the money to hire the software team to do groundbreaking work to make Amiga OS, and they made the first personal computer as the Amiga 1000. So we're about done because we're covering the architecture, and the next speakers should explain all the software. Um, I, I, I wanted to say one other little thing here about uh, things. Um, IEEE. Um, Joe's uh, uh, actually a fellow of the IEEE. Uh, because of his work. I've been a member since college. Uh, Joe's actually been featured in a couple IEEE magazine articles, so we're uh, proud to be members of the Institute of Electrical And Jay was an IEEE member. Yes. And, and the three of us also, uh, for local, for all graduates at UC Berkeley Engineering Bears. School. Go Bears. All right, so let's finish this. Oh, did you, oh, did you read the last slide? Oh. Um, back up two. Back, no, back up two, Joe. Back up two. You want to, uh, forward one. Uh, well, you're back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I just wanted to say that, um, in summary, we designed, uh, you know, some a pretty interesting product. And uh, um, one of the things that surprised me, I, you, you can speak also, was uh, how long uh, what we could stayed so popular among many people, among all of you, for, for it's, it's compared to any other technical product, uh, you know, an insanely long time. So here we are 30 years later, still celebrating. Anyway, so a little bit of resources. Um, all right. Here I have a hardware manual. Here's how all this stuff worked. Here's an article from 2001. It's called, The Computer That Would Not Die. <laughs> Here's one of my favorites. It's an MIT platform series book called, The Future Was Here. I don't have a copy of the computer company on the edge, but I think Brian is here. Is he? Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, and he's got a Kickstarter campaign to finance a new book on the Amiga. So, we are here in his memory. And here's how to find us. And if we have time, I'm not in charge of the schedule, we'll take questions. Where's the clock?